Welcome to GTI Predictive Technology. My name is Tom Honig. We're doing a video today to help people with their vibration data collection. We're gonna be naming the five most common mistakes made when collecting data, vibration data with an analyzer. And not just our analyzer, any analyzer that from a 30 year old piece of equipment all the way to what I'm gonna be demonstrating today on is our iPad wireless and wired systems that I both have hooked up to this test motor here. The first is hardware related. Accelerometer mounting is very key. We'll be doing it throughout the day and throughout our route. And most people will just allow the magnet to actually pull that out of our hand and slam it down on whatever asset point we're measuring. And that does two things. One, it disturbs the accelerometer, which is gonna need some settling time before you can take data and you can capture bad data. That's number one. Two, it can be damaging to the accelerometer. And that goes for wired and wireless because they both require magnets. The proper way to mount an accelerometer is to bring your hand close from the side angle so the magnet doesn't pull it out of your hand and simply tip it onto the access point. Then pick up your data collector, view your spectrum and collect your data. The second most common mistake that's happening is we don't look at our spectrums, which as you can see behind me, right there is a ski slope spectrum. And what that ski sloping is caused by are a few different things. It could be a, uh, a bad ground on the asset point, which is giving electrical disturbance to the accelerometer, but it also could be very high frequency, which is usually bearing or gear problems, high frequency amplitudes well over the rating of that accelerometer. And as you can see, I have no data to look at. I simply have, and the reason why it's nicknamed ski slope is because it looks just like a ski slope. So that is a key thing to recognize while you're collecting your data. Just don't hit save and back. Look at your spectrum and make sure you don't have ski sloping before you move to your next point. And the other one is going to the same point and at the same RPM, as because a lot of things that we measure can run multiple RPMs. So if we take data one month at uh, 2000 RPM and then data the next month at 4000, we're gonna have different amplitudes and trends. So the key is in our system, you can see you can look at the photo and know where your data point is so it's there at the same time. And there's another key way of doing that on the older equipment by marking those points with some pads or stickers or they sell pads so that we know we're collecting the same data from the same point each month at the same rotational speed. And then the other one that gets me all the time when I go look back at data that somebody else took and I want to diagnose a problem is they haven't set the right Fmax. So in other words, as you can see behind me, as I pinch this data in on our system and other systems have to be entered in manually, most of all my peaks are off the side of the screen and I can't see them. So if it's already been collected, now I can't go back and look at those different peaks and, and different uh, uh, FFTs. The data is off the screen. So setting your FMAX is key. And then last is grab the wrong sensor meaning the wrong millivolt per G, uh, or collecting with your mobile device and your 100 millivolt per G accelerometer and then going to a junction box to a permanent mount and collecting from a different accelerometer at 50 millivolt per G, which would cu cut your amplitude literally in half. So now your trending is all wrong and your, your values are all wrong. So those are the five most common uh, mistakes that people make, and we hope these little tips will help you collect better data, make better informed decisions, and uh, we're glad to bring you that from GTI. If you'd like to reach out to us, our website is www.gtipredictive.com, or our phone number is 603-669-5993. Thanks for your attention.